Cardiac output is the rate at which the heart pumps out blood per minute. The volume that the heart pumps blood into the circulation is known as cardiac output and is dependent on the heart rate and the volume of blood circulated in each heartbeat. The left ventricle provides the cardiac output for the systemic circuit. The amount of blood that leaves a ventricle in one beat is known as stroke volume. Stroke volume is measured in units of milliliters per beat, ml slash beat. In order to calculate how much blood is pumped out of the ventricle per minute, stroke volume must be multiplied by the number of contractions that occur per minute. The number of times the heart contracts in one minute is known as heart rate, HR, and is measured in units of beats per minute, BPM. Therefore, cardiac output can be calculated by multiplying stroke volume by heart rate and is represented by the formula cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. The milliliters measured for the stroke volume are converted to liters, making the units for cardiac output in liters per minute. For a healthy adult, a resting cardiac output is approximately 5 liters per minute. For example, if a person's resting heart rate is 70 beats per minute and stroke volume is 75 milliliters per beat, cardiac output is 5.3 liters per minute. The cardiac output increases when the demand for blood flow increases. During aerobic exercise, cardiac output can increase to 25 liters per minute or even higher. Once exercise has ended and the demand for blood flow decreases, cardiac output will also decrease. Cardiac output changes as the need for blood throughout the body changes. An increase in demand for blood leads to an increase in cardiac output, and a decrease in a need for blood leads to a decrease in cardiac output. The amount of blood circulated by the heart per minute is a direct reflection of the need for blood at that time. Number 4. Ejection fraction is a measure of the efficiency of the heart. The amount of blood available for the heart to pump is the end diastolic volume. The end diastolic volume is the volume of blood that filled the heart when the heart was in diastole, the resting state of the heart. Stroke volume is the volume of the end diastolic volume that was pumped out of the heart. Ejection fraction can be represented by the formula ejection fraction equals stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. The resulting decimal is multiplied by 100 and ejection fraction is measured as a percentage. For a healthy individual, ejection fraction often ranges between 65% and 80%. Ejection fraction is a fraction of the end diastolic volume, meaning it is the fraction of blood that was ejected during contraction of the heart. If end diastolic volume remains the same and stroke volume increases, ejection fraction increases. The benefit of an increased ejection fraction is to increase the amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart in one beat. The greater the percentage of end diastolic volume that is ejected during the contraction phase of the heart, which is known as systole, then the greater the efficiency of the heart will be. To understand this concept, remember that cardiac output is dependent on the amount of circulating blood per minute. To meet this demand for blood flow, both stroke volume and heart rate contribute to ensuring cardiac output. If stroke volume is decreased, the amount of blood ejected from the heart per beat is decreased. In order to maintain cardiac output, more beats will be needed in one minute to circulate the same amount of blood. As a result of stroke volume decreasing, heart rate must increase to maintain cardiac output. However, this also means if stroke volume is increased, the amount of blood ejected by the heart increases. This would mean fewer heartbeats were needed to circulate the same amount of blood per minute. With fewer heartbeats needed, the heart becomes more efficient as less contractile work is necessary per minute to circulate blood. Ejection fraction never reaches 100%. However, there is evidence that a healthier heart has a higher ejection fraction. Furthermore, a common problem in heart failure is a reduction in ejection fraction. The reduction in ejection fraction can become so severe that blood flow is inadequate for day-to-day -day activities such as walking or showering. With heart failure, ejection fraction can become so low, death results. Cardiologists rely on ejection fraction as a fundamental means of measuring the health of the heart.